boots up. Broke away from Virginia again. And I'm up here in Lewis, Delaware. And I'm actually vacationing this week in uh, Dewey Beach. It's about 10 miles away. And I uh, found this place. And uh, it's another one of these historical towns. It's the first town in the first state, which is Delaware, in the country. So just going to do a walk around, um, check out some of the historical sites. Anyway, going to check it out. Okay, here it is, the Reeves Holt building. And it's the oldest still standing structure in Delaware. They think it was built in 1665. And to give you some history, uh, in 1685, it was purchased by a guy, Philip Russell, and he turned it into a tavern. And uh, he used to be a cupbearer for William Penn, and a, a cupbearer is pretty much a uh, glorified bartender. <laughs> so yeah, he ran it as an inn, and then in 1723, it was purchased by Reeves Holt. And he, he was an Englishman, he was from Philadelphia. He, he was a lawyer, moved down here, and he lived here for, for 40 years. So he passed away 1765, no, 1763. <laughs> All right, and so after that, the house was lived in by a guy named Jacob Jones. He lived here as a child, um, but yeah, he's noted because he was a, uh, a decorated War of 1812 veteran. So after that, the house was purchased by a guy, John Marshall, and not the Chief Justice uh, from Richmond. But uh, yeah, the Marshall family lived in the house, lived here for 140 years. Yeah, some pretty cool looking uh, buildings uh, up and down this row. So also want to apologize my gimbal. It looks like it broke, so I'm holding my camera, so it might be a little shaky. And uh, yeah, let me go in and take a tour. As it is now. Mm -hmm. So we're over here in this part now. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, it's being renovated. The part to the right is the original, and it's closed off. Uh, the part to the left uh, that was built in the 18, 1850s, and uh, it's just a gift shop. So, But the uh, lady in there was really nice. She told me to walk down a couple blocks, and there are a couple of uh, historical buildings. So. Uh, they've got the uh, gas lights up there and that's the Lewis flag Hiram Rodden Burton House. So this thing was built between 1720 and Freddy's Barn. Found this row of buildings back here. And the, these were all uh, moved here from the surrounding area by the Historical Society. And this one down on the end, this is the Midway School. First class was 1898. And uh, it was originally just referred to as Public School number 178. And it was located somewhere between Lewis and Rehoboth Beach. Rehoboth Beach, maybe seven, eight miles south of here. And over here is an old doctor's office, and this was here in Lewis. 
built 1836 and yeah built kind of in a greek style and this over here they just call this the plank house and it says it resembles uh, architecture that the uh, swiss used when, when they knew uh when they moved to newcastle And it's believed this one goes back to 1700 is what it's saying. And over here is a, a blacksmith shop. This is constructed 1780. And this was also here in Lewis. And this is called the Elegood House, E-L-L-E-G-O-O-D. And it goes back to 1785 and originally built in Concord, Delaware. And not sure, I guess this is just part of uh, just an attachment or dependency. So, all right, this house over here is called the Rabbit's Ferry House, and it uh, goes back to the 1740s, and it doesn't specify, but it looks like the smaller building uh, to the right, attached to the right, is the original building, and uh, then it became a, uh, a kitchen, it says. So, walk around the back. And over here is just a, a privy or an outhouse. And uh, built sometime around the 1870s. And the old well right there. Kind of a cool something over there. I don't know what that is. Water wheel or something. And over here, the Burton Ingram house, it looks like. I'll try to get a better, uh, better shot of it. And I think, I guess the front actually is up here. Sierra 1800. says this is an arsenal colonial lewis arsenal site 1740 so this one's called the governor rodney house Roland House, 1740. 
finally back up on the Reeves Holt house. And a pretty cool iron fence. And the John Verdon house, Delaware River pilot built this house, 1888. Looks like this side of the old courthouse, uh, 1680, Governor Andrews. St. Peter's Episcopal Church. time to dig through here wow, some nice uh, tombstones 300 years old here's a uh, Revolutionary War veteran John Rodney This is, is pretty old. Um, maybe uh, later in the week, uh, I got time to come back. Maybe and I didn't realize that much was uh, back in this little town. Uh, just to let you know if you come. Uh, parking is pretty easy. I'm here. It's Friday. I uh, got here about 10 o'clock. But you do have to pay. You've got to uh, download an app, and I think it's three fifty for three hours. All right, made it. I'm gonna check out this little uh, display over here and go inside. So back here is the David Hall house. Looks like he was a colonel during the Revolutionary War and uh, also Delaware governor. So, yeah, I'm not gonna walk up there, but there you go. Pretty cool architecture. And uh, I know inside are some artifacts from this uh, HM Brig de Brac that sank in 1798. And this museum opened in 1931. Yeah, okay. Uh, the 300 year anniversary of the settling. And Delaware was settled by the Dutch. Pretty cool hinges. Okay, I'm going in, and you may have read on that placard back there, Dutch settled this area, 1631. That settlement only lasted three years. They came back resettled, 1658, but uh, in 1664, they were taken over. The colony was uh, taken over by the British. And, and the Dutch were kind of like the French, that they didn't really concentrate on, on colonization. They were more interested in, in trade. 
and uh, see also Swanendale means swan <laughs> and I guess Dutch all right These are all the shipwrecks. All right, cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It was free to let you know. And uh, yeah, a lot of art artifacts from that Dutch settlement. Um, a lot of artifacts from that De Brock shipwreck. And to let you know, it wrecked out on that harbor 1798 uh, in a windstorm. And um, yeah, just a little bit of history on the town. So oh, we also found out about a couple tours to a couple lighthouses in the area. So hopefully that works out. And now I'm headed to the Cannonball Museum, the Cannonball House Museum. It's about two blocks down, so. So yeah, during the War of 1812, uh, Royal Navy set up a blockade around the port here in Lewis, and uh, yeah, trying to cut off supply lines, um, caused economic hardship, and uh, this area was defended by the Delaware militia and the, uh, the the new U.S. Army, and it looks like they were fired upon April 6th into the 8th, uh, 1813 heavy cannon fire and I know 800 shells were uh, fired on the area and yeah fired for uh, 22 hours so yeah and uh, over here the Otis H. Smith City Dock And over there is the Cannonball House. It looks like
looks like this is just kind of going over the same thing. Yeah, 800 projectiles uh, fired upon the town. And it's called the Cannonball House because there's still a cannonball lodged in the, in the house. And it's the last house in the area to... Uh, still standing that shows scars of uh, from the bombardment. Run across here. Okay, yeah, you can tell I do a little bit of research. Uh, last remaining house uh, bearing scars of the War of 1812. Pretty cool crest. Looks like you go in, $5 admission. Yeah, I think this is the exact same placard from across the street. So this house was built 1760, it was enlarged 1790s, and it was the residence of the McCrackens. And they served in the Delaware militia. giant bell eighteen eighty eight it says eighteen ten naval cannon and this stands from the ancestral home of Castello di Verrazzano. And he was an Italian sailor. He was commissioned by the King of France, 1524, to voyage over here on his ship, the Dauphin. I know I pronounce everything wrong. And he was said to be the first European to discover the uh, this middle, middle Atlantic coast. So kind of cool Hi, Hi. Hey, good So that's the rest of our So this Menhaden was the prize fish apparently uh, around here. And you can make oils for, for, for lamps with it. Those kind of do. 
way to pull up on uh, Jacob Jones. Yeah! Is there a restriction on the number of people who can attend? Not that I know of. Jealous of America's flourishing condition. Yeah. I thought Brittany was going to try to capture us. She has trampled upon the dignity of our family. Why would they want to? Um, take oh, yeah, one last thing. I forgot to film the cannonball. And the cannonball itself is original, but it was placed there as a marker. The original cannonball is the one I, I filmed inside. So, um, oh, and one more thing, all, all those cannons in that little uh, War of 1812 Memorial are, are all original, so that's pretty cool. And uh, the whole reason that uh, Lewis was uh, such an important port because it was kind of a gateway into Philadelphia. So, and this was the best of the museums here in town, so. Anyway, my uh, my three hour parking is ending, so I think I'm gonna head on back. So just kind of a quick tour, um, not as extensive as Fredericksburg and Alexandria and some of the other places I've done. But anyway, all right, see ya.